Many of you know that last July we had a specific incident occur here in Cambridge. And many of you know that incident became this, an incident discussed across the country and around the world, literally. I know people who in Paris and in Turkey heard about the incident that happened here in Cambridge. And the reputation of Cambridge uh, was stretched, I would say that. But back here in Cambridge, very few of us said anything. And I'm known to have a big mouth and talk a lot. And I defy you to show where I was on television or in any newspaper saying nothing. Didn't say peep, like many of you. But in the barbershops and in the blogs across the city, I keep hearing discussions amongst the men and the women of this city about the impact of that incident and the impact in the aftermath of what they call the beer summit at the White House. Now, for me, the question I have, and this question has been posed to me by many of you, in the wake of that incident, where are we really in this world of discretion? Many of us didn't know much about discretion and policing. I asked the police commissioner in a private meeting with him exactly what was the crime that the professor committed that he was arrested for. And the commissioner said, well, I'll answer that in this way. I don't think that the sergeant crossed the line. I think he went close to it. However, if I had gone there, said the commissioner, I don't think I would have arrested him. This answer was perplexing to me because it didn't, I, I wasn't sure. Because I know we have 272 sworn officers, so I'm wondering, are there 272 different discretions? I think the first thing that I tell my students about the police and about the role of police in their encounters with the community is that all of us need to understand that the police have a lot of discretion and that much of that discretion is not regulated. Um, they can go up to any of us at any time and say, hi, I'm an officer, I have a few questions for you. Um, if that is true, and discretion is that vast, then the question that we've come here tonight to address is this. How do we ensure that that discretion is not racial, racially based? How do we ensure that they're not using that vast discretion um, to engage in racial profiling? A kid calls the police, kid says, there's a man sitting in a car outside of my house uh, may or may not have followed me home from school. I'm here alone. Car's been there for 30 minutes. What do you want the police to do here? Well, I know what I want them to do. I want them to go up to that person and say, buddy, what are you doing here? You know, do you live around here? Do you have some identification? Um, and if that is so, and it is, then we're in the clutches of a dilemma, right? Which brings us here tonight, which is we want the police to intervene there. That person hasn't broken the law, right, by sitting on a street. It may well be there's an innocent explanation. I bought some coffee, I didn't want to text while driving, I thought I would use my cell phone, and the police investigate and say, sorry to bother you, uh, go on your way, right? Um, and hopefully reassure the kid. Now, that's the good part of discretion, right? The first thing that we need to address is that police chiefs and community members and the Department of Justice need to require police departments to manage police discretion and to ensure that it's used in a race-neutral manner. The very first 
and most important lesson that I learned doing this over 10 years is that you cannot possibly manage what you don't measure. In the context of the Gates rally incident, if you had collected data and if it had been a community-based data collection system in which the community sat down with the police to decide what data was important to collect, and the police and the community discuss that data collection process, not just when there's a crisis, but in a non-crisis, regular situation. Then, when Gates and Crowley scenario occurs, you could look at Crowley's record. And you could say, I want to know, for the past two years, how many times Officer Crowley has arrested someone from disorderly conduct, which was the charge. And I'd like to know more than that. I'd like to know the racial demographics of the people who've been arrested for disorderly conduct, and then I'd like to compare it to the rest of the officers in Cambridge. And I want to know more than that. I want to know, and this is a very important question, what happened after the arrest? How many of those disorderly conduct charges by the Cambridge police and by Crowley actually went to court and were tried? And how many were broomed out of the system or dismissed because they didn't want to bring them into court? And why? Because there may be 272 different discretions with the police, but there's only one law in Massachusetts about what constitutes disorderly conduct. Um, I am a police trainer, and I've been doing training for 10 years. I'm part of the team for the Mass State Police and doing training for them now. And as a trainer, one of the very first things that we cover when we do racial profiling training is a very common scenario. And the name of the scenario is, you're stopping me because I'm black scenario. And it goes like this. We say to all of the police officers, when you stop, particularly young men of color, you are going to encounter a very angry individual. And they're angry because this is not the first time they've been stopped. And it's not the first time that they perceive that they're being harassed. And if the cycle of hostility and anger and suspicion is going to end, then police have to be part of the solution. So do we folks, but so do they. You're not trained for this. You're on your way to the grocery store. You're not paid to, to get this encounter and defuse it. And you may get angry. That's not wise. That's not what I'm advising. But I'm saying the only people I can train are the officers. We as a community have to begin to meet more often with the police in settings like this, where there is not an emergency, where there is not a particular situation that needs to be diffused, and where we can address these concerns. So tonight we're doing that. Let us begin here, now, tonight. Thank you.